Hey everyone, it's me, Chris, from Body Nova Fitness Coaching. And I'm here today with um, um, a question that I got from someone. Uh, you know, my man tried to jump in my DMs, but anyway, uh, on Instagram. And his question was, um, how do you uh, set your goals in a way that can stay fo you can stay focused with? And um, it, it's pretty simple, but I guess people just don't think of it. They just have that big number or that big goal um, haunting them, you know, or looming in looming, um in their minds and stuff but um, you know there's a few tips that uh, help you with goal setting you know once you found your why and stuff like that and you know you want to make a smart goal um, here's a few tips or here's I'll also give you a scenario here um, and you can take a look at this um, but anyway the first is to find your starting point you have to have some sort of accuracy and people kind of over gloss this or, or look over it because they don't want to face it but you, you have to face the reality of where you are because if you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going. It's kind of like, you know, you tell me, hey, how do I get to the nearest 7-Eleven? Well, it's going to make a big difference if I don't know you're in Oklahoma. If you're in San Diego, the directions to the nearest 7-Eleven is going to be a lot different than it is sitting here in Oklahoma. Same thing with fitness. Um, if you're trying, if you're actively trying to go after a goal, you know you have to know where you are in relation to the goal, so you know which direction to head off in. So um, that becomes important. Uh, getting your body fat done, getting circumference measurements may be deal. But again, um, photos worked really well, and it worked well in this scenario because um, um, I have you know a good amount of experience with body fat and, and things like that. So we can I could figure out the body fat from the photo for this client. But um, anyway, you have to know where you're at and, 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 and where you want to go, which is next. Um, um, but anyway, whatever your goal is, you can cut your goal into smaller tasks. Okay, so, um, um, you know, so like if you have a goal and your goal is, your, your overall goal is to lose 50 pounds, you know, if you keep thinking of it as losing 50 pounds, you know that might be that might be too much on you you know to always carry that with you but if you said okay well um i'm gonna make that goal um i can lose i know i can lose between one to two pounds a week safely you know that's realistic you know so um let me cut my goal into losing two pounds every week you know for i mean because yes we take 25 weeks uh, anywhere for 25 50 weeks but that's the immediate goal and that could be uh, that could be the goal that you're looking to set okay you cut it into a smaller goal and you can even cut that smaller goal into behaviors you know that you got to get there okay I got to hit the gym four times per week I got to do my hit exercise three times a week or hit twice a week and I can have fun by doing freaking body pump or whatever whatever class you like spinning whatever you like to do but you got to set yourself up and, and carry out the behaviors that will give you the outcome that you're trying to get okay now a lot of people they, they really don't understand goals and metrics and, and numbers and, and things like that and um, I understand that so what I would have clients do sometimes is find someone that looks similar to their goal and then we do the math okay so with that being said, um, in reality, you want to find somebody that's close to your body type, so it's realistic. But if you, if you know, if your mental health is is an issue, like if you're going to rack yourself trying to in the brains trying to uh, be achieve something that's, that that um, might not be realistic, then you want to find someone who might be closer to your build and uh, things like that. But um, if not, if you're okay with it you can just use an ideal and and um, see how you relate in uh, relation to that ideal and um, I'll show you more on this because I, I had a client and I guess she's one of the most popular um, fitness models on uh, on the internet uh, she wanted to look like Michelle Lewin now they have two different body types okay um, but um, and the math will not be super super exact but you can get a good idea of where you need to go by doing the math and I'm going to show you this in a bit uh, I'm going to show you the pictures and I'll show you this in a bit of stats and this is kind of an example of um, the goal um, setting the goal here so um, 
again, we're here, uh, we're looking at Michelle Lewin. Um, I kind of grabbed these from the internet. Um, again, some of these may not be, uh, reality based because there's a lot of people out there if you choose the wrong source they'll be out there um you know to seem like they're the authority and it's shock value they're not in on that camp there because um i was looking at some and they're saying oh yeah she's 9.9 percent body fat it's like she's not 9.9 percent body fat all day all all uh all day every day okay um you could see that she's when she would compete She's much leaner, I'm going to say she's considerably leaner than she is normally for most of these normal photo shoots because people don't like uh, um, women that lean. You know, they think it's muscular, which really is just more she's, you know, she's, she has low body fat. That being said, okay, Michelle is five foot four. okay. Her weight fluctuates, um, but um, it's, I have 127, it's supposed to be like between 125, 135, or 120 and 135. Okay, so um, I just shot down the middle at 127, all right? Her body fat, um, it, between 12 and 15, I chose 15. Um, it's a little bit more realistic, okay? Um, lean, so at 15, her bo lean body mass is 108 pounds, and her fat weight would be 19 pounds. She'd be carrying 19 pounds of fat. So my client is taller, two inches taller than Michelle Lewin, so... Um, that she was um, five foot six, okay, um, weighing 180, 138 pounds, so she's 11 pounds heavier, okay, and her body fat is 28%, um, so that's, that's almost doubled up, okay, um, all right, so body fat is 13% higher, and her lean body mass is 99 pounds, so um, Michelle Lewin carries nine pounds more lean body mass, and half the fat, which um, uh, Michelle Lewin carries 19 pounds of fat, and my client carried 38 plus pounds of fat. So as you're looking at this, you you know you, you're seeing that okay, what do we have to do? Okay, um, we have to gain some muscle for that look. We have to gain some muscle, and we have to drop a considerable amount of body fat, and we have to gain some muscle. Now, with that in mind, is because my client is taller, all right, she might even have to gain more muscle to achieve that sort of look. They don't have the same genetic structure, so they, there's no way they could be an exact copy. So I don't want you to think that. But what I want you to understand is how this is in play, okay? Because her being a, a long, uh, uh, really, uh, kind of ectomorphic, you have to, and taller, you have to build more muscle to, to uh, create that illusion. So when people say, oh, I want to be like that, but that's too skinny, it's like, no, what, what the problem is, is is you, in relation to that person, you, if you get that lean, you'll be that skinny, but to be like that person, you may need to gain more muscle, and that's how that kind of works here. So now, in terms of the other goal setting, okay, um, you might, what we did was, is we, lo we trained to lower her body fat, okay, for 12 weeks. We gave her 12 weeks to get as lean as she can get. All right. And um, I'll show the outcome here in a bit. Okay. And then we gave her one to two months to gain muscle. Okay. So we can drive the amount of calories she burns up, um, uh, you know, per day up. Um, she gets closer to that look. And, um, and it gives her a break from all the variables that, that we use to help get her lean.